In September 1887, in a small village in Tamil Nadu, Swami Shivananda was born as Kuppu Swami Iyer. He was born into a lineage of scholars and saints. Young Kuppu, as he was called, grew up as a highly energetic, intelligent, and yet extremely kind boy. In a Jesuit school, he began his relationship with Christ and developed a thorough knowledge of the Bible. He then went on to study medicine at Tanjore Medical Institute. He would spend day and night on studies as well as practicing at the hospital. It was said that at the end of his first year, he could answer questions from the final year exams better than most doctors. In parallel, he also developed a keen interest in meditation and yoga, poring over books and practicing every day what he read. When he was 26, he had an opportunity to go to what is now Malaysia as the manager of a hospital. It was a difficult job. He had to work for a really harsh owner. When the owner asked him in the interview, Can you handle this hospital? Ayer's response was, Yes, I can manage even three hospitals. It was a difficult job, but with his kindness and hard work, he soon became the favorite of every patient in the hospital. Known as Dr. Ayer, people claimed that he had God's gift for miraculous cures. Instead of charging patients who were poor, he would give them money for their rehab. His fame and wealth spread. He gave more. He published medical books. But with all this, this extremely energetic doctor somehow found time to continue his spiritual disciplines, starting his day at 4 a.m. for yoga and meditation. The years passed by when one day the turning point came in the form of a patient who was a sadhu. Impressed by the devotion and caring of Dr. Ayer, the holy man took a liking to the young doctor and gave him his only possession, a book on Vedanta. Reading the truths in this book, Dr. Ayer began to feel an overwhelming desire to devote himself totally to spiritual pursuits. In 1923, after 10 years of service, the decision was made. With just the bare essentials in hand, this affluent doctor renounced the world, returning to India. He began a pilgrimage, visiting various temples and saints, eventually reaching Rishikesh. On June 1, 1924, 37-year-old Dr. Iyer was initiated into sannyasa by Swami Vishwananda. The name Shivananda Saraswati was conferred upon him. In Rishikesh, he lived in a small run-down hut that was known to be infested with scorpions. There, he did intense tapas, observed silence and fasted, sometimes for days together. He would stand up to the hips in the ice-cold Ganges in winter mornings and commence his japa, coming out only when the sun came out. He would meditate for over 12 hours a day. With all this intense tapas, Swamiji never neglected service to the sick. He visited the huts of sadhus with medicines and served them. He massaged their legs. When they fell sick, he begged for food on their behalf and fed them with his own hands. He would bring water from the Ganges and wash their huts. He treated cholera and smallpox patients, sometimes staying up all night if needed. If they were too sick to move, he would carry them on his back to the hospital nearby. Finally, with the money from an insurance policy, Swamiji started a free clinic in 1927. He began to serve more pilgrims. He saw Narayana in all of them. Thus, after years of intense and unbroken sadhana and yoga, he enjoyed the bliss of Nirvikalpa Samadhi. He had come to the end of his spiritual journey. In 1934, Swamiji and a few followers established an ashram on the banks of the Ganges at Rishikesh. 
they called it Ananda Kutir or Cottage of Bliss. Swamiji over time expanded the ashram and its operations. A non-profit trust called the Divine Life Society was founded. A pharmacy was started, a hospital, a printing press, cottages for disciples, a yoga center. Swamiji himself wrote and published close to 300 books on a broad range of subjects. Funds came in from everywhere to support these ventures. There was something else that Swami Shivananda contributed to this world. He attracted great spiritual seekers and sparked in them a unique devotion. Many spiritual giants of the last century can trace their lineage to him one way or the other as their guru. Ten of his direct disciples went on to create new organizations. Swami Chinmayananda was one of them. His ideology was simple. He condensed the entire spiritual teaching into four small words: serve, love, meditate, and realize. 